I'm Dan Edmonds, and this is a Ford Bronco first edition. I'm really excited to drive it up my ramp and see how well it articulates. There are two things about this vehicle that kind of work against each other in this test. One is it's got a stabilizer bar disconnect uh, that the Badlands has, so that's good. But the bad thing is Sasquatch. These 35-inch tires, when they're fitted to this vehicle, they have to limit the travel because they get stuffed too far up into the fenders otherwise. So actually, the vehicle that would score better than this one is a Badlands because it has 33-inch tires, more suspension travel, and the stabilizer bar disconnect. But I don't have one of those today, so we're going to have to save that for later and see how this combination gets on. There, we're all lined up. I have to say though, it's a little bit hard to see out this way, much harder than a Jeep Wrangler because this character line sticks up, whereas a Jeep comes down right there. And then of course these big Sasquatch fender flares stick way out. You really can't see where the corners are. When I drove through my gate back there, it was a little bit of a, uh, an act of faith. But anyway, I'm lined up with a ramp here. And uh, yeah, let's look at the front clearance. Well, there's more clearance that I could ever need up here. This has got a great approach angle. Of course, the higher stance of the 35 inch Sasquatch setup does improve the approach angle compared to the other tire combinations that they sell. But still, I mean, it's still gonna be good even if you had the 33s on this. I mean, there's just all sorts of room, especially right here in front of the tire because the low point's further inboard. I'm going to drive up with a stabilizer bar connected. We'll make a measurement there, and then I'll disconnect the stabilizer bar and keep going. Well, I, I think I've got it. I've got this piece of plastic film underneath the tire and I can pull it out with a little difficulty. And what that means is that this is just barely touching and that's exactly what we need to be at so that we can measure the point of maximum flex, maximum climb up the ramp, at least with the stabilizer bar connected. We'll do it all over again the other way. Well, I've got my T-square. I think I put it right on the ramp like that and find the place where it crosses the middle of the hub. That seems to be about right there. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here and make some measurements and calculations. Seventeen and fifteen sixteenths. Okay, divide that by the sine of twenty, and that is fifty-two point four five inches of climb up the ramp. And of course, if I divide that by the wheelbase of this vehicle, which is one hundred point four for the two-door, and multiply that by a thousand, I get five hundred and twenty-two as the base score with a stabilizer bar connected.
Normally, this would be the point where I back the vehicle down the ramp, disconnect the front stabilizer bar, and then take another cut at it. But, you know, that's what you have to do with the Rubicon because of the way its front stabilizer bar disconnects. It has to be, you know, no load. But this particular one, it's a different hydrostatic kind of uh, mechanism, and I can disconnect it right here, right now, and keep going. Now, there's a debate about whether that's actually useful. You know, if you just disconnect it at the beginning of the trail, or would you wait until you got to an obstacle? I don't know. That depends on your personal choice. But the point is, you can do it if you get into a situation where you didn't disconnect your stabilizer bar, and now you wish you had. Well, now I'm in that situation where I gotta find the sweet spot, so give me a minute while I find out the point of the actual lift, because I've just gone by it a little bit. I think I got it. Yeah, I just barely lift on the tire, and I can get this under here, and I bet you I can pull it out. Yeah, just a little resistance. That's perfect. Now I can measure. All right, we're here. Uh, this is the point at which the rear tire just barely came off the ground. And you can see with the Sasquatch 35s that they're pretty well stuffed in the fenders. There's a little clearance above my fingers, but of course, this is with the wheels turning straight. I bet you the contact they're worried about happens at full lock. So anyway, if you get 33s, you get a little bit more travel. I would be a little further up the ramp at this point. And right about there is where I'm going to put my tape and make my measurement. That's 22 and a quarter inches. And I don't have my calculator. All right, 22 and 1 quarter inches uh, divided by a sign of 20 degrees is 65.05 inches of climb. And that's 12 and a half inches more than it was with the bar connected. Now divide that by 100.4. And multiply by a thousand, and I get 648 with the bar disconnected versus 522 with it connected. That is quite a big improvement. Well, pushed a button on the ramp, all loaded up even, and it went 12 and a half inches further up, increasing the RTI score or flex index score, as I like to call it from 522 to 648. Now, how does that compare to other vehicles? Well, my KDSS equipped 4Runner, which is a longer wheelbase four-door vehicle, scored 555 in stock configuration. And the Land Cruiser, you know, the Land Cruiser with KDSS, I think it's 661, something like that. So this is below that. But of course, this isn't the Badlands with the extra travel and the 33 inch tires. And it's also a two door. So there's apples and oranges at play here, but this is still a pretty darn good score and a nice improvement from a button you can push all loaded up. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention it works in four high as well as four low. Anyway, that's it from me here on the Flex Index ramp at Dan Edmonds Studios. <laughs> And I'll see you next time, and I'll also see you in the comments. And remember to like, subscribe, share with your friends, all the things.